and begin. Hello, beautiful people of the world. I'm Coach Dahl from Rings Elite Boxing. Welcome to our podcast, To The Bell. I'm here with one of my good buddies, Davis. Let's go hot. Mm, going hot. What's up, dude? What's up? So, a couple of things we're going to talk about. Josh Taylor, too, from Lopez Fight, coming up. Uh, Adrian Broner with his next fight coming up t- uh, Friday, actually. And then we have Errol Spence with a potential fight, which we'll talk about later on, too. I'm not going to say who yet. So, right into it. Josh Taylor and Tim from Lopez. Thoughts? Uh, today we watched the uh, the uh, press conference. Press conference, and dude, they were. It was kind of weird. No, it wasn't kind of weird. I guess it was different because they were really just like pumping each other up. It was like, yeah, he's a great fighter, man. He's a good fighter. We're both going to be giving our best, you know. He was talking about how good the other fighter was. They were both doing that back and forth, it's, which, which was kind of weird. What's really weird is that you literally just told me that before we started uh, hitting record, and I made a short just the other day with them talking because Top Rank did a video of them going back and forth just to hype the fight up. Nah. And they're talking shit the whole time. Bad. Really? Yeah. See, so I missed that. I had seen and I, I missed the press conference. So you're telling me, I'm like, is this the same guy? Because they were talking, because he's he's like Scott, like Scottish. And Tino's yeah. like, you're going to wear a skirt out there to the fight. And he's like talking shit to him the whole time, talking about like where he's from and all this stuff. And he's like, I'm going to beat this boy easy. And then you're saying that they were being friendly with each other. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, but then again, they got to sell the fight too. If they're being all buddy buddy, they're going to watch that and them hugging each other. True. I think, dude, this is to people that like me, I don't really know Josh Taylor that well. He's never really came across my radar as like a boxing fan, but it's actually a really close fight as far as like the records go. Like, Tiofimo is, he's lost once and it was to George Cambosis. And then Josh Taylor has not lost any. And they both used to be undisputed. So that's that's pretty it is a close fight, man. And then also the cost of it is free. So you know if that's you're a boxing fan, yeah, you get to watch that for free. So I mean, I'm gonna try my best to watch it. I'm not gonna make any promises. Regardless, I watch the highlights and what I can of the fight just because I enjoy watching Timothy Lopez. So I mean, we'll, we'll see. I know. I also said in the short we did a while back, his last fight at the very end, you know. You can see him say it, and you can really hear him say it. He's, like, talking to one of his trainers, and he goes, man, do I still got it? And they're all, like and, – and he brought it up. One of the guys is, like, man, you question your ability. Well, like, can you can you go back to that? What does that mean, do I still got it? And he was, like, you know, I'm just saying, like, blah, blah, blah. No, he looked discouraged. If you watch the video, it looks like he's about to cry. Yeah. He's, like, do I still got it? Well, if you look, look back and you listen to uh, – I can't remember what interview it was. I think it was with uh, – I think it was with Terrence Crawford, and they were asking him questions about, you know, you ever consider losing? He's like, no, that's never been a consideration that I'm ever going to lose. I'm going to kill him when I get in there. You know, and then him to say that, he felt, I feel like he's already lost the fight. Yeah, it was very weird, man. Like, he, he won the fight, and then he was just like, just kept saying it, just really questioned himself. And, like, Floyd talks about it, too. Floyd's like, man, like, I'm not going to lose. Like, am I going to lose to amuse you? Like, I like I refuse. Right. But like you said, yeah, I feel like it's more like a head case. Yeah. And like a big thing too, man, like his dad's his trainer and there's been a while. Like there was one interview that he did with his dad and Teal starts crying. Talking about it's like him and his dad because his dad's really hard on him. And then later on, they're like, what was that with you and your dad? And he's like, oh man, you know, my dad's my best friend, my best trainer, blah, 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 blah. So his headspace isn't really very like clear focus because he always has some stuff that goes on throughout his career. Yeah, I've always had a I don't I don't know if I like the um father son duo kind of thing anyhow. I've told you about it. Usually I, I feel like it's I don't know, I feel like there's something there that you don't say something to your son or you wouldn't say something to your father that may need to be said. I don't know. I don't know. I've not been in that situation of, of a fighter and a coach. So I don't know what really but I feel like there's you're holding back if you're not if, if you're family, you know what I mean? Or maybe you don't. Maybe you I mean, maybe one, you do let it all out. The ones that I've seen, it's it's very few and in between that it, it works out. So you have like one that I'm off the top of my head is Roy Jones Jr. and his dad. It was his coach. And they had a falling out. Yeah. And he was his dad making him do unnecessary training. Like I was talking about guys that him sparring with one hand he tied behind his back. His dad would make him spar with one hand on purpose. So I don't know about that. And then you have Sean Porter with his fight with Terrence Crawford we talked about. His dad pulled him out of the fight. Through a talent, it was like he didn't train good this fight, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes that. it does help, sometimes it don't. Floyd Mayweather and his dad, Floyd's dad was originally his trainer. They fell out. Now they're like they always have their ups and downs. Like there's videos of him kicking him out of the gym and this and that. So there's a few times where it does come back and bite him the butt, and there's some that does good. Yeah. But Cecilia Lomachenko, his trainer's his dad. 
Papa Lomachenko. Yeah. So with that one, that's that's on the other side. That's like a good father son relationship, you know. But sometimes it's, but I mean, it was just weird on Tio's part because he's crying, talking about his dad, and then he's like, "Oh no, we're good, we're good." Then why were you crying? If you guys are good, there's clearly some animosity built up in between you and your dad. Because why, why was you crying about him, you know? Right. And then, like, so he's going into this fight, fun fact, with no other cornerman. It's just his dad. He don't have an assistant coach with this fight. He said he just needed his dad. He said nobody comes close to my dad and his knowledge of boxing. He's like, so we don't need an assistant coach with this fight. So that might play out to be a good thing or might play out to be a bad thing. You know, only time will tell, which we'll, we'll know soon enough Saturday. And then – uh. Going down, Adrian Broner, who which we've talked about a few times in this podcast, uh, got to meet him personally at Caleb Plant's fight, uh, year 2020. Cool guy. He's he's his early career, he did phenomenal. He was like the prospect of Floyd. I mean, everybody would compare him to Floyd and this and that. And now he's coming back fighting Friday and he's under Don King's promotions, which is wild considering the man's like 90. So Yeah, well he's, you know, a legend. Don King. Now, see, some say he's really good, and some go, like, forget yeah. Don King because he's still money from Mike Tyson. Yeah, I mean. But he's still in the game. He's a promoter. He's one of the best. And it's it's wild seeing I mean, him up there, man. Talk, and he's, I just can't remember the age thing. That's insane, man. I mean, I mean there's nobody in, in boxing or even halfway knows anything about boxing that don't know who Don King is. So, facts. That's I mean, very true. He's got connections all over. If anybody can sell you, it's Don King. So. Mm. And, uh, he might steal you money, but... <laughs> <laughs> everybody's going to know you're fighting. Yeah, everybody's they're gonna all going to know, know you're not getting near That's as much sure. money as you think you're going to get with Don King as your promoter. But AJ Broner's a bad dude, man. He is. I mean, I've watched some videos of him working out here recently, and bad dude. What's I, really I went cool, back and watched some of his older fights, too, and I love his style. And I love his work ethic, man. Like, if you watch, like, he he almost always does it. I, I wish fighters would stay in the gym all year round, at least stop by or whatever, because he'll get really big and then slim down. Yeah. Get really big, slim down. I mean, he takes his, his training very serious. And I've talked about him before on the podcast about how, uh, you know, he was locked up, he was convicted, and the day he got out of jail, he ran all the way to the gym to train. Yeah. And he said he's been taking his career serious ever since, which you can say serious, but then you're like, well, he don't let us, everybody always says he don't let his hands go. But sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes you see AB and he's like tearing dudes up. And then on the other side, you see him just like Philly Shell and not throwing as many punches. Like you see him when he fight Mikey Garcia. He, he's like that the whole time. Uh, but he did say in the press conference I seen, he said, I will be world champion again. And he's fighting at 140. Which, what I like to come to mind at 140 is you have Roley. Roley has a belt at 140. Roley Romero. And I'm like, man, I would... I think that would be an interesting fight just because the like build up to it. Because they both like to yip yap bad. They love to just talk that smack. Yeah. And Adrian Broner, I mean, I think he could beat Roley and take his belt. And he could be a world champion again. He could. That's every fighter's dream is to be a world champion. And Adrian Broner can sell a fight. Which is f- ironic because his pay per view fight for Friday is twenty five dollars. I'd like to see him beat the hair plum off Rowley. Yeah, bro. <laughs> he talks so bad, man, and I-, I see a lot, especially with the Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford fight coming up. He's yeah. always like, man, I feel bad for Terrence. He's ugly. He's, he's <laughs> I'm like, man, what have you done that comes close to Terrence Crawford? Oh, yeah. For real, what have you done close? And you're really like, oh, I feel bad for him. He's this. He's that. I'm like, you say that, but your fights. No, people are not waiting to watch you fight. People right. love to see Terrence and Errol and all them fight. So, I mean, I'm like, yeah, hey, okay, we'll see. Again, I like to see it. I like to see Adrian Broner fight Rowley just to see, like, him get that belt back. Because I'm I'm an Adrian Broner fan. I got to meet him. I, like, I've seen him. So, I, I'd like to see him go back in there and, and get that back and be a and be a world champion. I know some guys that hate Adrian Broner, and the reason behind it, they're like, I lost a bet on him. I don't like him. I'm like, what? Yeah. He, what do you mean, dude? Let's, don't bet on him then. You know, you're mad at any loss. Like, he's the one that fought, dude. Getting all butt hurt. And then you got Errol Spence and the Terrence Carver fight coming up, which you talk about the whole time. And yeah. I'm I'm pretty excited about that. One thing that comes to mind. And that's the which, July 29th fight. Yeah, yeah. Las Vegas T-Mobile yep. Arena. And, dude, them tickets are selling fast. And that that fight is huge. That that's, fight is one of the biggest ones this year. Yeah, see, I was going to say it's bigger than the Javante yeah. fight for sure. The thing that so that fight is they're superstars. You know, you go out there and you ask people on the street, they know Terrence Crawford. They're like, mm, I don't know who that is. But you're like, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia, yeah. 
But as a boxing fan, this is the fight you want to see. Two undefeated fighters in their prime with a really close record for undisputed at that weight class. Yeah. And then they're saying, Errol Spence is saying, I'm not going to say they're saying, but Errol Spence is saying that he could potentially face Canelo. Uh, it'll be next year, of course, because they're saying, you know, when he fights Terrence, if he beats Terrence Crawford, they're going to do a rematch clause. He said there is a rematch clause in, in, yeah, I read in that. play. So regardless, we're going to see that twice. Should, unless you're so I don't want to defend my belt, whatever. But we should be seeing that fight twice and then see what happens next. But he's saying if he can beat Terrence July 29th, beat him again in November or December, that he's going to try, if the fight comes to the table, fight Canelo at 165 or 168. Says it's a natural weight. But, I mean, we'll see. Because I know, like, Canelo's already got Dave Benavidez that he has to fight. Yeah. And then he's got the, he says he wants that Dimitri Baval fight. Yeah, it'll be, so, it'll be late next year if he fights there. Yeah. Yeah. Because they would want to, I mean, that would be, again, that's another but guy. He wouldn't, that, he wouldn't be that big of a fight, though. That's Which not going to Canelo and Earl. I don't think it'd be that big of a fight. I don't know. I mean, he don't even have it. Which Canelo is going to draw a crowd no matter what. Right? Oh, anybody. It, it doesn't matter who he fights. If if Earl, I think Earl Spence is going to is going to draw. I mean, you ask me. I mean, I think Terrence beat Earl Spence Jr. I, I think, think he so beats too. him. I think he beats him twice. It, I don't think it'll be easy. I think it's going to be a tough fight. I just do think that Terrell's going to outbox him and he is going to beat him. Uh, but like like you said, I don't. I don't see Errol even beating Canelo. You know, I mean, Canelo is another breed, but I mean, only time will tell if they even if that fight even happens. I mean, it, it that fight and they saying if that goes to the table, Canelo is not really the one that that wants to fight the people. They want to fight him. Yeah. Very rarely do you see Canelo say, "I want to fight Errol Spence. I want to fight this guy. I want to fight Dave Benavidez." No, they all want to fight Canelo because he is the cash cow. He is the yeah. face of boxing. Nobody's like, oh. I, you know he don't he don't reach out to want to fight any of those guys. He's always the one that they want to fight him. He's always the the hunted, so to speak. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Terrence, dude, that fight's gonna be a really good one. I mean, it's gonna I be. I can't wait. That's gonna be a real good fight. Yeah, a good boxing match right there. I, I don't really know. Like I, even then the the undercard's not confirmed, but they did say. That. Yeah, I looked Ooh. it up. I couldn't even find anything on it. I just seen that one interview with or that one article with his dad saying like uh. Uh, is it Cruz's dad saying that he yeah. is going to fight on the undercard? It would be the co well, But again, that's that's seriously. That ain't even. Nothing's confirmed, confirmed until yet. until they come out and say it. I but th- they should be confirming that by the end of the month if they want to push this fight. So yeah, I mean that like <laughs> if the main event, like of course the main event's going to sell, but if you have a good stacked undercard, the fight's really yeah. going to sell. That's yeah. why the UFC does so well because it's like a stacked. The whole event's stacked. I mean you're like on the edge of your the edge of your seat the whole the whole event. You know, yeah. uh, I mean. Uh, I'm excited, man. I just hope boxing just keeps these good fights coming. I mean, here recently, it's been a dream come, a dream come true as far as being a boxing fan because, I mean, they've been just back-to-back back on these amazing fights, man. I mean, Errol Spence, like, it's huge. I think it's neat that we've been talking about it for, like, the past couple podcasts. I'm yeah. like, I want to see this. I've been it's, seeing it. I've been seeing it's it. It's getting kind of old talking about it now. We just wanted to get here. Yeah. I, it, yeah. <laughs> and, it, dude, it – I was at like July. So much. I'm like July. I can wait. I can wait another month. Yeah. What's What's July after waiting years? What's What's another month? Yeah. I mean, I think it's awesome, dude. Uh, anything you want to say or? No, I mean, just nice to be out from behind the behind the camera. Well, the definitely. Front of the camera. Yeah. And now I'm on the front. Yeah. yeah no, my different. man sits right over here and and talks to us behind the yeah, behind different. that computer. And now he's up here in the in the main spotlight. Main spotlight. All right, guys, if you like what you saw, like what you heard, looking for the next podcast, all that good stuff, like, comment, subscribe, let us know your thoughts on these huge fights coming up. You know, like, you know, the Josh Taylor team from Lopez, Adrian Broner, if he's going to be a world champion, and people usually have a big controversy debate about him. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, let us know your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. And time. <laughs>